Now we're going to talk about the different types of muscle tissue. And there are three subtypes of muscle tissue. So the first one is skeletal muscle. The second one is cardiac muscle. And the third one is smooth muscle. And when it comes to muscle tissue, when it comes to these three different types, they, they actually differ quite a bit in their structure, their location, and their functions. But kind of the overall function of muscle tissue is movement. So the overall function is movement. Um, but we'll talk about kind of more specifically what we mean by that when we talk about each of these three types in more detail on the following slides. So now let's take a look at where each of these types of muscle tissue are located. So let's start with skeletal muscle. So the name kind of tells you where it's located. So your skeletal muscle is attached to your skeleton. which are your bones. The skeletal muscles can also sometimes be attached to the skin. So for example, when you're making facial expressions, like when you smile, it's actually a skeletal muscle that is um, kind of like pulling on the, the skin in your cheeks in order to pull it up into a smile. So one end is always attached to a bone, but sometimes it's also attached to skin. So we'll say attached to, skele to skeleton and sometimes skin. For cardiac muscle, the only place we find cardiac muscle is in the heart. And when we look at smooth muscle, We typically find it in the walls of hollow organs. So um, some examples of these hollow organs are gonna be things like the digestive tract and the urinary tract. and the respiratory tract and the reproductive tract. And not to confuse you, because we also talked about these tracts when we talked about epithelial tissue, um, and that's because epithelial tissue is also there. Um, so if we were to take a look at like a cross section of these tracts, and by tracts we're basically talking about tubes, right? So with like digestive tract, you basically have a tube that goes all the way from your mouth to your anus. For your urinary tract, you have a tube that goes from your kidneys out, you know, through the ureters into the urinary bladder and then out through the urethra to the external environment. For your respiratory tract, you have a tube that starts at your mouth and goes into your trachea and goes into your lungs. And then the reproductive tract, you have, like for example, in females, you have a tube that basically goes in through the vagina um, and into the uterus and then up through the uterine tubes. So you just have these tubes kind of like jutting into your body. And the way that these tubes work, if you were to look at a cross section of them, um, kind of up against the, the lumen. So remember the lumen is the space. So this is where like your food is traveling through your digestive tract or the urine is traveling through your urinary tract. And so right up against the lumen, you're gonna have that layer of epithelial tissue that we talked about previously. And then you typically have a layer of connective tissue um, kind of attached to that. And then outside that connective tissue, you typically have another layer, and that's where you're going to find your smooth tissue.
Now let's take a look at the functions of the different types of muscle tissue. So once again, we'll start with skeletal tissue or skeletal muscle tissue. And the kind of the main function, if you will, is to move the skeleton. So it's to move either the entire body or to move your limbs around. So that's kind of the primary function of skeletal muscle tissue, but it does have some secondary functions as well. So for example, things like facial expressions. Uh, things like breathing. So your breathing muscles are skeletal. Um, it can also help with thermoregulation. So um, shivering. Shivering helps to increase your body temperature. Because your muscle cells are making ATP and using ATP, and remember that during energy conversions, heat gets released as a byproduct. And so shivering is just kind of like an involuntary contraction of your skeletal muscle in order to um, produce heat as a byproduct to help warm you up. Your skeletal muscle can also serve um, for protection. So for example, your abdominal muscles uh, protect your digestive organs. So those are the, the main functions of skeletal muscle. Now for cardiac muscle, remember that cardiac muscle is located in the heart. And so its function is to contract, to pump blood throughout your cardiovascular system. And blood is this, uh, this fluid that has cells and other stuff in it. And the main thing that blood does is it transports nutrients around the body. All right, and we'll talk about blood a little bit more in detail later on, because blood itself is actually technically a type of connective tissue. but the cardiac muscle is what helps to move that connective tissue around. And then the third type of muscle tissue are smooth muscle. Its primary function is to move materials through hollow organs. For example, your smooth muscle is responsible for swallowing. So it's how your body moves food from your mouth into your stomach. And then your stomach has smooth muscle that moves the material from your stomach into your small intestine. And then your small intestine has um, smooth muscle that helps to kind of squeeze that material through the small intestine into the large intestine, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing with your urinary tract. So the way that urine gets transported from the kidneys into the urinary bladder is by the smooth muscle in the ureters. Now the type of contraction that smooth muscle does is called peristalsis. And peristalsis are these kind of rhythmic wave-like contractions that help to push material in one direction. So you can kind of think of it as like squeezing a tube of toothpaste when you're trying to get that last little bit of toothpaste out, where you're kind of squeezing the toothpaste in one direction. Well, that's how smooth muscle works in these hollow organs is it helps to kind of squeeze the material in one direction to move it from one part of the body to another. Another thing that I should mention here is whether these uh, functions happen voluntarily or involuntarily. So skeletal muscle contractions are for the most part voluntary. And what that means is that we can consciously control whether we contract these muscles or not. So for example, if I want to flex my arm to show off my massive biceps, I can do that consciously and I can make that happen.
Um, I can also prevent that from happening. If I don't want to flex my arm, I can not flex my arm. Now, there are some exceptions to that rule. For example, the thermoregulation, so shivering itself is actually involuntary. And the breathing muscles are kind of interesting because you can control your breathing muscles. So you can control them voluntarily, but they can also contract involuntarily so you don't have to think about breathing. So the breathing muscles are kind of weird because you can override the involuntary nature of it voluntarily, but like when you fall asleep, you don't die because your breathing muscles will still keep working even without you voluntarily moving them. But for the most part, skeletal muscle is voluntary in nature. Now cardiac muscle and smooth muscle are both involuntary. So we should say contract involuntarily. All right, and what that means is that you do not have any control over whether your heart beats or not. You can't think about stopping your heart and make it happen. For the structure of muscle tissue, I'm actually going to address this on the next couple of slides as we look at some pictures and I'll point out some key features of the different types of muscle tissue. So starting with our skeletal muscle, first of all, the, um, the cells of skeletal muscle are these kind of long cylindrical cells. And you can see that kind of over here on this picture where this is like one kind of long cylindrical skeletal muscle cell here. And the, the nuclei typically are kind of pushed up against the edge of the, the cell membrane. So basically this outline portion here would be the cell membrane. And the, the nucleus is pushed off to the side because the cells are just jam-packed with proteins. And these proteins are what allow you to actually contract and, and make your muscles move. Now, if we look at this picture over here, so this one's kind of more zoomed in. This is probably a 400x magnification. You can kind of see that, um, well, once again, you can see kind of the edge of the cell here. So that would be the cell membrane. And you can see the nuclei kind of pushed up against the edge of the cell. And then you can kind of see these faint lines kind of going um, horizontally like this. And these lines here are called striations. And these striations are what make these stripes. And these stripes are produced by the contractile proteins that actually make the cell contract. If we look at cardiac muscle tissue, and once again, we've got um, kind of like a one, 100x magnification here, and then I kind of zoomed in and did a 400x magnification here. And so with cardiac muscle cells, the, the cells are kind of these uh, branched cells. And so it's a little bit hard to see on the picture here, but these cells actually have these kind of like branched appearances to them. And that's because each cell actually connects to multiple other cells. And this is important for cardiac muscle tissue because the muscle tissue has to be able to um, kind of contract in unison to work together to pump blood throughout the body. All right, so you've got these branch cells that kind of connect to like multiple other cells. And then you can see the, the nuclei pretty clearly here. So like here's a nucleus here. And like I said, it's kind of hard to see the branch nature of the cells. Although you, you can kind of see how this one has like a branch kind of coming off of it here so that it can connect to multiple other cells. Now, one key feature of cardiac muscle tissue that you should know about are these kind of thicker, um, kind of horizontal lines here. Now these are not striations, although these cells do have striations. So if we look over here, we can see these kind of lines here. 
these are the striations kind of like what we saw in the um, skeletal muscle cells. So these are those stripes that have to do with those uh, contractile proteins. But this other kind of band that we see, so we can see it pretty clearly kind of right here. There's another one right here and another one right here. And we can see them over here as these kind of thicker striations almost. And these are called intercalated discs. And what these intercalated discs do is they connect adjacent cells to each other. And they allow the adjacent cells to communicate. So they connect adjacent cells and allow cells to quickly communicate with each other. Now this is important because once again I mentioned that these cells may be able to contract in unison so that they can work together to pump the blood throughout your body. Because a single cell doesn't have a lot of force. A single cell isn't going to be able to move the blood all the way up to the top of your head. But if you've got you know, potentially millions of these cells all contracting at the same time, the collective force is strong enough to push that blood through your blood vessels. And so these intercalated discs help to hold the cells together so that they don't shred apart during that, that force. It also allows the adjacent cells to communicate so that they can contract together at the same time. And for smooth muscle tissue, the main reason why it's called smooth is because it does not have those striations. So no striations. Remember those striations are the stripes, so it does not have that striped appearance like we saw in skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. And um, so once again, we can kind of see these like dark circles uh, here. These little dark spots are going to be the nucleus of these smooth muscle cells. And then the cells themselves are kind of these long, um, they call it fusiform, so long fusiform cells, which basically means they look like a deflated football. So these cells kind of take on this kind of long um, tapered appearance with a nucleus inside. And so you can kind of see, if you use your imagination, you can kind of see that like here, and then you've got your nucleus in the middle here. Um, and then you just have a whole bunch of those that are kind of um, kind of stacked on top of each other and connected to each other. So as you're taking notes, you might want to go back and um, kind of make a chart for yourself to compare and, com and contrast the different types of muscle tissue. And so the chart could look something like this. So you could look at the type, which would be something like skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. And then you could look at things like the specific location the um, specific function. Um, keep track of which ones have intercalated discs, which is only cardiac. You could take a look at which ones have striations. You could take a look at um, the cell shape which kind of differs. <clears throat> um, you could also look at, and I ran out of room here, but you could also look at um, whether it is voluntary or involuntary with regards to how it contracts. So you could make another column here as to whether it contracts voluntarily or involuntarily. So even though you might be filling out this kind of like overall chart of muscle tissue, you know, versus epithelial tissue and kind of the overall functions and structure and stuff like that, you might want to focus a, a little bit more specifically on these different types of muscle tissue in addition to that to help you kind of compare and contrast the different types with regards to where they're located, what they do, and their different structures.